It's Wednesday, July 28th. Andy and I just got back from a bachelor party, and the brain cells are lacking. We got a Comic-Con breakdown for you. No meat today. It's going to be fun. It's going to be light. It's going to be something different and something new. This is Mostly Superheroes. Hello and welcome to Mostly Superheroes, a weekly pursuit for the world's best stories with an emphasis on live action superhero stuff. I'm your host, Logan, back again here in the studio. It's the Giggler. Andy, give us a little warm up. Say hello to the fans. I forgot to put your sheet up behind you, so I'm going to do it right now in the middle of the episode. You say hello. And just tell the fans what you're thinking. Okay. Um, yeah, it's great to be here again. Um, this is kind of awkward, but... <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, exactly. Not not a lot of brain cells. We're doing our best. Uh, we're going to put together some sentences here. But uh, we're both kind of recovering mentally, physically, emotionally from a, a long weekend in, in, in Denver. Did some whitewater rafting. We did a lot of drinking. Uh, we saw some live music for the first time in a very long time, which was, was so amazing. much needed. I'm back. Oh, there he is. Good job. <laughs> that was seamless. You didn't have any <laughs> did, problems at all. Did anyone notice I was gone, do you yeah, think? Yeah. If you're listening, I thought you sounded natural. It was perfect. Oh, cool. And cool. yes, it was great to be back. Yes, we went to Red Rocks. First time ever for this guy. I think first time ever for you. For a concert, yeah. Cool. I'd been there for like just a hike one day. Like just for views, scenery, look yeah. around. I'd done the same thing. Carrie said she had been before, but this was the first time for a show. We saw STS9. Correct. If you're familiar, just like musically cool, awesome group. And we had a great group just of fellas. So funky. Funky. So much. I loved, I loved the guitar. And then they just have the guitar get kind of electrical. That was pretty cool. I'd so never seen a group like that. And just smoke machines everywhere. Yes. And yes. when nighttime hit, they throw the lights up on the rocks. It was pretty cool. And I think our buddy, The Bachelor, had a really good time. I think we, we nailed it. It was three nights is a long time for a big group of guys to be together. I think we did a great job. We yeah. <laughs> kept their we? cools. We we made it all over Denver, and we were safe. We had the mask in the pocket, all that. And I mean, when we came back, what well, we learned, Andy, some sad news here in St. Louis, Missouri. Mask mandate is back. What is happening? Oh, my gosh. Make up your mind, world. Masks are not. We just don't know. I don't know. Man, I miss Denver. I just had to order a, like a 100-pack on Amazon just in case. Of masks? Yeah. You got the, the, right the now, ready I, to go? I threw, them, I threw a bunch of mine away, like if they were just – Hanging out in my car, I was like, "Oh, well, don't need these." <laughs> You're like, "I'm done. <laughs> what an I'm idiot. done with COVID." <laughs> what an idiot! Like, <laughs> I like that because it was like you were like, "You know what? The mask mandate's gone. I'm gonna throw these out." Yeah, Carrie just told me she's like, "I guess I'll start uh, washing these again," because it's like we were putting them in the laundry when you're wearing them every day, and it's like already last night. It was like, "All right, we're gonna go out and go to a place," and as we're going out the door, I go, "Hey, don't forget your mask." She's like, "Oh my gosh." Like that's the only thing. I'm not a, like a mass complainer or anything. Like I'm not. I don't put myself in one big group or the other. I'm riding this middle wave of like, hey man, we're doing our best out here. I agree. Like nobody get upset. Totally, totally. Like everybody on every side should keep their cool and stop getting like too upset about any of this. But it's a little annoying to like have to put a mask in my pocket again. I will be honest. Yep. Um. But anyway, man, good to be back. And yeah, I was not kidding. It's been like, when especially like, we drank on the bachelor party. It was one of those. And at this age, in your 30s, it just starts getting a little bit harder. Yeah, that yeah. W- that one-day hangover turns into a two-day. This has almost been a three-dayer. I agree. I mean, everyone was pretty well-behaved, like with the exception of one of us. So <laughs> yeah, that's, you, that's, a, that's positive. That's a bachelor party, though. There's always one. You always got one guy that's just like, what's he going to do? The wild, the wild card. <laughs> the wild card. Well, good to be back, man, here in the studio. Like I said, very different than our typical episode. Going to still have the same great for- format here for you guys, but just a little bit different in terms of what we're talking about. No big feature today. Me and Andy are keeping it light, and we'll talk about what we're going to watch next week. But for now, let's open, as we always do, with the fans. Fan mail. Fan mail is fun today. Just a quick reminder, of course, to call that studio phone, 754-CALL-LOG. That's 
888-585-5564. You can call and leave a message. You can shoot us a text. Terms and conditions apply. I literally say that just because I've heard it my whole life. That's, <laughs> that's something I know nothing about, <laughs> and I'm just going for it. Um, but this is really fun, man. Last week, we had some big news that Dan, your boy Dan, joined us on Patreon. Used the, he went for the hero. That's three bucks a month, and he's supporting the pod. And I told him, I said, you want to throw out something we wanna, that you want us to talk about, let us know. Sorry for the big pause. I had to take a drink. Well, it was one of those moments. I had a preview of this question like a month ago when I had dinner with this with this fella. Pull that pull that up just a little bit towards you. Oh yeah, and yes, and uh, so yeah, you said you had a preview of this. Well, what I told him was, if you got a topic, let's hear it. This is a pretty good one. He he jumped right on it. First of all, he didn't waste any time. He wasn't like, okay, cool. He was like, I have a question right now. I love it. He still needs to call in though. I don't. We need to hear his voice. And he said he was going to. Yeah. And I checked. This I, does not. You can't hide behind the keyboard, yeah. Dan. We need to hear your voice. Yeah, Dan, if you're thinking this counts for like the phone call you've been called out on, it doesn't. <laughs> it's, it's, it doesn't. But we are going to feature your question. I think this is super awesome, really timely, especially since we took a week off from the MCU. MCU. We're talking about the MCU right now. Let's set the stage here. Dan says, I have a question I would enjoy hearing you all discuss. Now that Captain America and Iron Man are no longer leading the Avengers post-Endgame, who do you want? I like that part of the question. Or predict, because that's different, right? Want or predict, okay. Okay. will like be that. the leader of the next MCU Avengers. Dan, great question. I love that you threw in the want versus the predict, because for me, those are two different paths. You know, if I go prediction town, Andy, I want to hear from you first, because you said you already had a preview of this. Maybe you've given it at least half a thought compared to me that's thinking about it right now. Okay. I, I gave it a little bit of thought. Never really came to a full conclusion, but... After looking at this beautiful photo that our YouTube viewers will probably be looking at um, mm -hmm. from another Marvel guy. Yes, this is from like another that. Marvel guy on YouTube. Got to thank him for the image. It looks like he kind of made this himself and he threw in a lot of the new folks so that we could have him kind of front of mind. Otherwise, I'd be sitting here grasping at straws, especially this week. Yeah, I, I would go with let's see, I'll go with the want first. Let's go with let's go with like, what is it? Pick the three. Or is it, oh, I'm just going with one. Just one, the, each, one, one, one that I want, one that I predict. I like that. That's simpler. Right. Go for it. All right. What, that I want is Thor, clearly. Hell yeah. I mean, I'll give it up for him. I don't think there's much more to say there. He's the best looking. He's also the one with, by far, like the most experience. Like he's old. He's so old. Like he's over 1,500 years old or something, he says, in Avengers Infinity War. And then on top of that, he's like the most alumni Avenger. So I like that choice. Yep. And then I predict, though, Doctor Strange. All right. Predictions, Doctor Strange. I'll give it up for Doctor Strange. I'm sorry. I shouldn't hold the applause just for me personally. I got to remember. There's like a, in my mind, there's an audience here watching us. <laughs> and that's Someday who, there may be. And there might be. Maybe we'll do mostly superheroes in a live studio one day. Who knows? Uh, Doctor Strange, I like the prediction, but here's why I think that prediction would be wrong. In today's climate, I, I just can't see them making the leader of this group a white man. I think it's going to be I... something more diverse, which is great. I love it. We're seeing new characters come in from all different parts see of that. the world, different ba backgrounds. And if I know Disney, they're going to definitely want to be playing to that. And I just, I bet like if someone says, you know, a white guy, they're like, I, no, that's wrong. Okay. I, I'm I, not saying that's right or wrong. I'm not saying I have an opinion on it, but that's my guess. So my prediction will be either Captain Marvel. I thought about this for a half a second when Dan sent it over. I predict either Captain Marvel is like, she might be like the next I can see leader. That, see this all happening. Because yes. she hasn't even had a chance to like be a leader yet. She's only been, we've seen her in Endgame be like part of the team, but you know who was leading it then was Black Widow. She was the leader. So I don't know, maybe that, or maybe uh, who's the new uh, Miss Marvel? You know, Kamala Khan, uh, the actress Kamala Khan, I think that's, that's mm -hmm. her name. Who mm -hmm. knows, maybe her. I also like predict maybe a Spider-Man. I had three in mind. Okay. Now, if I went one, it actually is exactly what you said, Thor. I want to see Thor lead these guys, but I just don't know if he will. He's already given up being a king at the end of Avengers Endgame. He hands over the mantle to Valkyrie. I'm talking major spoilers in the MCU, but at this point... This is like talking about comic books now. There's like 20, there's seven, there are 27 titles out there now. So we just, what are you going to do? Spoiler for every MCU <laughs> thing? I don't know. Maybe I guess we could do that. But uh, Thor, I don't know. Is Bruce Banner even in the mix at this point? Oh, damn. That would be a good one. I didn't even, like, is, I don't I, know. You know I just he, don't see it either way. But 
Okay. All right. I um, like I like your picks better than mine now, so I'm just gonna copy yours. Well, who are we ignoring here, man? Captain America, new Captain Falcon. How is he, he's got to come in and be yeah. Captain America is typically the leader in the in That's the room. True. That's true. So maybe just by kind of default, they'll be like, "Well, Cap used to be the leader. Let's just let Sam do it now." I mean, yeah. And his his speech at the end of uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier in the finale. That's I mean, that sounded like a leader speech. So it was a leader good, speech. It was a little. A it was a little long. Yeah, I was just thinking in my head. I I I X'd him out just because he was so recently Captain America, but in the end, I mean, he's still been an Avenger for the same amount of time. So you, whatever. You know what I like most about this question, uh, besides just talking about all of our favorite characters, is actually thinking through how are the Avengers even going to come back together to become a team that's led by anyone? Because you got to think about the Avengers structure. I guess at in, at in in game. Everybody did come back, and they they did stick together through the blip. Like Scarlett Johansson was Black Widow, Natasha was running the group before they blipped everybody back, right? Yeah. So it's not like it all fell apart. They've all been working together over time. How are they going to show this group like getting back together? Is it going to be like in Thor: Love and Thunder? Like, is this going to play into Spider-Man: No Way Home this December? Like, we get the gang back together. There's got to be like a we get the gang back together movie or episode of something. Okay. You know and what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's like what it's building to in the long run. Because think like... about how they came together in Infinity War. It was like they're out in space, and then someone knew to send Thor to Doctor Strange, and Doctor Strange was like, well, we got to call Tony Stark. So now that there's shit going on like in Loki and the end of that show, I think that the phone calls are going to be made a little earlier, and we're going to get a lot more interaction with these characters earlier in this phase of the MCU previously than what we've seen before. Yeah, I think it could be... Doctor Strange. That seems like, yeah, it does. Going to be the biggest implications and of everything. You, your prediction might be perfect. We, yeah. we are perfect, perfect in our own ways. <laughs> uh, Dan, <laughs> great question. Any other thoughts there? Any other uh, characters you're thinking uh, of that could rise to the top? Props to Dan for a good question. Yeah, for stuff. that got my brain just running. Dan, thank you. And you can get a uh, your fan question feature just like that you don't have to be on patreon you could do it in the facebook mostly superhero squad but if you are interested in supporting your favorite independent podcast just go to mostly superheroes.com forward slash patreon and you can get yours featured just like that dan you're not off the hook give us a call at 754 <laughs> call log we didn't forget about it all right let's talk about some news news and rumors all right news uh some scary news today guys this is fresh here uh, july 28th Happened today is from BuzzFeed. We have this article in our episode description. Bob Odenkirk, folks. We're talking about Better Call Saul. This is Saul Goodman, Jimmy McGill. He also was in a movie recently called Nobody. He also is in I Think You Should Leave Season 2. What? Yes. He's also in Arrested Development, and he plays the uh, counselor for Tobias and his wife. Uh, oh, my gosh. It's very funny. I just watched it recently. It's top of mind. Anyway, guys, send some positive vibes to this guy. Apparently, this is according to Julia Reinstein over at BuzzFeed, Bob Oden Odenkirk collapses while fil filming Better Call Saul. So Better Call Saul is filming right now in Albuquerque. It's season six. I think it's the final season. And this guy's taken to the hospital. Like He's okay. I, no one knows even what happened. Like that, I was writing this. This is from today. It happened this morning. He collapsed, and, there, and now everybody's sending out these positive vibes. Aaron Paul, uh, Brian Cranston. Have you heard anything about this? Do you know what happened yeah, to this I, guy? I don't, I don't know exactly what happened. I think it's pretty. It, I don't think it's known even at this point. But I, I hate that this is the saddest thing that we've talked about in the show since when Rick Moranis got punched in the face. Well, that's exactly. <laughs> I was like, I wonder if Andy remembers Rick Moranis <laughs> walking down the street gets just blasted by a stranger. Yeah, but... You know, if anybody had it coming, though, uh, Rick Moranis. Um, Bob Oder, Od Odenkirk. I think I was saying that wrong. I think I was saying Od Oderick or something. It's Odenkirk. Um, man, man, hope you're okay. No news on this exactly. All we know is he collapsed, and he spent the night in the hospital. Are you looking up to see if you find something new? Yeah, I'm going to check the world. Yeah, check the internet real quick, see if there's anything been new. I mean, you know how it, it happens. <clears throat> something could happen one minute ago, and we could know about it. So, it's you know, this could be breaking news. Um, Brian Cranston, though, it felt almost like people were putting out pictures with him. Like, hey, Bob Odenkirk, hope you're feeling okay. I'm like, he's not dead. Like, don't put a picture of him on your Instagram. Like, don't treat it like he's passed, you know? Like, he just, we don't even know what happened. Got it. All right. Oh, my gosh. Did you find something? Yeah. Make, so make sure you source that. Yep. You got it. This is a... Uh... Remember, podcasters, it's important to source your material. 
the Hollywood Reporter. Mm -hmm. Bob Odenkirk is in stable condition after suffering a heart attack on the set of Better Call Saul. He had a heart attack. Oh my gosh, Bob. So sorry to hear this, but you say he is stable now. But I see via Lights Camera Pod. Uh huh. Great, that, gr great group over there. Yeah, his son Nate says tweeted that he's going to be okay. But, oh my gosh, I was like holding my breath over here. I feel I feel better now. Bob Odenkirk seems like one of those guys that's maybe just a really good guy. I agree, but I, I especially agree after him being in. I think he should leave. So. You need to watch season two right now. The truth is, though, I don't really know anything about him personally, but, man, I love him as Saul Goodman, Jimmy McGill. Have you watched Better Call Saul? Yes. We're only on, like, season two. The new season is soon, I think. Or is... Yes. I that's well, like well, they're it, filming. It's, yeah, it's coming up. So I can't remember the exact date. but Yeah, they're filming it, but this is obviously going to put a delay on it. We're going to hear about it. If we find out anything new on this, we'll let you know. But, man, most of all, positive vibes out to Bob Odenkirk. Happy to hear he's going to be okay, but, damn, the guy had a heart attack. Good job, Andy. Find it out. Thanks to Hollywood Reporter and BuzzFeed for the help with that. One other piece of news today before we move on to what you're watching. A new trailer drop back in the MCU, of course. It's hard to avoid it at this point. Shang-Chi, which pronounced in the movie trailer, Shang-Chi. Oh, my God. And the Legend of the Ten Rings. We got the second trailer today. I think it was one minute long. I loved it. It was awesome. It got me more excited, way more excited than that first trailer. Like, you're seeing action happen. You're seeing the rings. You're seeing, a, like, maybe a bad guy. You're seeing the locations of this place. Where are they going? Andy, tell us about it. And what were you thinking about I, when I said Shang-Chi? I remember that the the main actor in this tweeted that, like, Sing, months ago. Sing Lu. Simu, Simu Lee. We got to he this you know it's funny is he, this the thing people keep getting it wrong yes he was a clarification of how to say the movie title and his name and I can't, all right well <laughs> I can't then, all right well here I got it. one covered based on what I heard today yeah, in the trailer and it was Shang and not Shang and that I agree I was I'd been saying it incorrectly all the time well listen let's get this guy's name right oh yeah why don't you pull that up too thank God I mean we're PC Mike you are seeing the power you own man yes. look when we we're putting the giggler to work he's over here typing on his phone like a madman i see a little bead of sweat smelling or er, spelling everything wrong <laughs> i thought you were gonna say smelling horribly <laughs> yeah and no you're doing a great job um but pc mike hurry back we're in we're in we're in trouble <laughs> simu lou lou l-i-u yep. is that is that correct. Every, is that correct yeah yeah all right simu lou shang chi all right tell me what you thought of this trailer when you saw it because this was just today i think the rings are awesome. The rings on the arms. I can't wait. They're they look insane. I understand that some people are mad that they're not like actual rings, but like you gotta you gotta pivot sometimes. I know, but there were ten of them. Bracelets are cool too. But why not just have them? They, there are ten. What if? Yeah, it would have been easy. I'm not mad. I'm not one of these. I, but you know me. I don't get mad about much. What if he's just wearing like ten of these like live strong? Bracelets. They just have superpowers. <laughs> well, what, where do you think this power comes from? Like, let's just talk about this as two people that are ignorant of Shang Chi. We don't know really anything about this character. Have you read about him in your studies with Marvel Unlimited? No, not at all. Is he come up in one a a series yet? No. Wow. Not that I've. How many I've have you read? Through, I've been through a couple: Infinity Gauntlet, Secret War, and he's not in either of those. Okay, so this is already giving us some good inclination of like maybe where he could fit because <clears throat> we've learned that a lot of the stories tie together certain characters. Like, we've learned that Kang, the Conqueror, is tied to things around time travel. Well, maybe Shang-Chi is more tied to, I mean, obviously, you know, they're in Asia. We haven't really spent a ton, a ton of time in Asia, in the MCU. Was that where Madripoor was in Falcon the Winter Soldier? It could was that be. An, was that an Asian be. country or town or city? And maybe I'm totally misspeaking. Could be. I could totally be misspeaking. I don't think we know at this point. Well, honest. we need some comic book experts but, to help yeah, us out I, with this. I really sure, want to know why he's fighting about abomination. And that's what we've heard, right? And was that in the trailer? Yeah. Oh, I missed I missed it. It was that. in the, the prior one. I must dude, I missed that. I must have just looked away during that one thing that they showed because I would have lost my mind. We just watched the Invincible Hulk. Yeah. I I I don't know. It's it, How is that happening? I think that's maybe how that he gets connected to the the Avengers, who knows. Do you think that Abomination it's the same one from. It has to be. That's the MCU. Yeah, it could be. I mean, so what do you think that guy's journey? He looks. Has been? It looks way different, though. He does look different. He looks different. And so. I and he didn't kill him. It, the Hulk didn't kill him in that movie. He just choked yeah, he him can, out. Yeah, he can still be alive for sure. Um, well, I'm excited know. to see this thing. This second trailer, dude, it got me pumped. Like yeah. it got me actually very excited. The magic in it. I'm like, how do these rings work? And then how's this going to tie into everything else? Because it will. 
Anything else on Shang Chi? We get, we know now. You got it. All you right. said it wrong the last time you said it. And I can was you can you do you. a quick uh, when's this coming out again? September third, actually. Never mind. September third. There I, you go. I already know. I know it from memory. You can find that schedule at mostlysuperheroes.com forward slash MCU. Let's talk about what we're watching. What you watching? September third is so close. <laughs> September third is very close. Like that's coming, but I I don't want it to go too fast because that means like summer has yeah you're right has ended. <laughs> Good call. And we've made it through. I prefer August. summer over, uh, Shang Chi. We'll just say that. Yes, and uh, but I am excited. I'm sure we'll go see that one in theaters. And uh, yeah, let's talk about what we're watching here, and we'll always be watching MCU stuff, and that's never gonna stop. Andy, you're up first. We got a Netflix series. It's the fourth season. It's one I've never ever seen before. I know nothing about it other than a promo I saw for it yesterday. The show is called Atypical. You've obviously watched seasons one through three. And have you finished season four or have you just starting it? We are about halfway done with season four. Um, they're like 30 minute episodes, probably 10 per season. Okay. What's the premise of this, this so, character here? Um, I want to make sure that I'm saying this right. So this is. We're really checking ourselves today. <laughs> We're making sure that we're on our, <laughs> on our game. I, I mean, we really need Mike. Mike. I know. We miss you, man. I, I should have got a laptop. He'll be back. He, he, he messages. He's coming back soon. He's, All right. He told us. On Netflix, uh, this is, uh, for the YouTube viewers, This Sam is the main character. He's uh, on the spectrum uh, autism, and he he's hilarious. It's just really funny. It's like a wholesome like show, very funny, like definitely a family thing. Yes. I mean, it's just like a, a total like change of pace of what we're, we usually watch and talk about, so... Mm-hmm. That I like it in that that aspect. They're easy to watch. Like I, we could probably watch the whole season in one day. Just it's that good sitting there, um, and you don't have to pay like a lot of attention because it's not like crazy super plot points. But like I said, it's 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 wholesome. It's definitely like a show that you watch like with your kids, family. Um, he loves penguins. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say a lot without. I can't really talk about fourth season. Without yeah, but you're enjoying it. other stuff. But it's just like a family show. Like his. His dad's Michael Rappaport. Mm. Uh, he's 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 really funny. I like him in the show. Um, that's about the only. They're at, he's got a sister that he, they're both in like in high school. He, he's moving into college, so it's like situational yeah, a lot of family dynamics. Situational that, that comedy, drama, drama, drama modern drama, family. Comedy, yeah, kind of like a modern family thing. You got like a you know modern a autistic kid in a modern world. Looks like he's like what twenty or so. So he's like a little bit older. You know, I've, one show I watch around autism is The Good Doctor. Now that's primetime TV, but love that show. Not to like group all of these together or say like one autistic show is good, so the other one will be good. That'd be silly. Um, but I do enjoy that one. And the one promo I saw for Atypical just yesterday, it was one that, uh, you know, when you're scrolling through Netflix, when you stop on a title, Netflix shows you a, a yeah. preview. Yep. Because uh, they're animals and they know that it works. And <laughs> it does. <laughs> every time we <laughs> you start, you're like, well, I'm going to start this now. And Carrie and I looked at each other and we just kind of gave each other the nod of like, that looks pretty good. Atypical on Netflix. Glad yeah, to have you. Yeah. And like, of course, you are bringing it today. It was I wouldn't like rush to like watch this. It'll be right around. Now, but I mean, it's enjoyable. All right. Atypical on Netflix. Season four is out there streaming now. Uh, go check it out. And uh, maybe we'll, it sounds like it's on my list. So maybe it might come around again. Let us know if you're watching it out there. Write us in at MostlySuperHeroes.com. Or again, join that private exclusive Mostly Superhero Squad on Facebook. For me, folks, this week, I have one that I finally got around to watching, too. Quentin Tarantino's, what, eighth or ninth film? He loves saying that thing. He loves saying that to people. Um, we got Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, Margot Robbie, and a lot of Kurt Russell, a whole bunch of folks. Um, this movie was a lot of fun. It was beautiful. Uh, being it's Hollywood in the 60s and stories of things that are true in history. But this was the big question for me was, are all of these stories true in this or were they just kind of living? What you're seeing is um, they have references to major events in the 60s, as a lot of times movies like that do. Like Forrest Gump is just a highlight reel, you know, of what happened in American history. This is kind of uh, a highlight reel of just things that are very famous from the 60s. And then Quentin Tarantino, Tarantino does his thing, does effed up stuff <laughs> with people that seem like semi normal and puts them in extreme circumstances. It was okay. It got a little lukewarm for me. This is a spoiler free review. There's no reason for me to spoil this thing. I want to give you kind of just my reaction. Uh, it's not one I'll ever watch again for sure. When the credits started rolling, I thought, okay, definitely not like Kill Bill, you know, definitely just not like the same, like, oh man, 
just kind of like, okay, that was fun. Uh, if you haven't got around to seeing this and you're a Tarantino fan, you must watch it. If you're not a Tarantino person, maybe you'll leave it off your list. I'm going to give this thing a solid 2.4. Okay. It's pretty low. I'd give it a little bit higher than that. Give I us your seen thoughts. Tell us about I've it. I've seen it one time, and I think the issue is I, I, I mean, I enjoyed it for sure. I'm a Brad Pitt super Go. fan. Fanboy out here. Um, Tell us about it. But in the end, you would I think you just expect a, just an overall better movie from if from Brad and Leo, but from Brad Leo and from Tarantino. Yeah, yeah. I thought it felt. I thought I've it, never been a huge Tarantino fan, so that maybe that's that's my issue. I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's. I don't okay. know why. I just never really. He's okay. I mean, like Kill Bill was. I think those are just the best. Yeah, I don't like think, those are awesome. I'll, I'm gonna admit something crazy that I've never even seen a Kill Bill. Movie oh yet. my gosh, our boy Brandon, I know that I know. just told me today that he absolutely would become, he would, would love to come on the show. I invited him. Uh, we, now we have something to talk about <laughs> for his first episode. He's gonna lose it. We're gonna do Kill Bill. You're gonna watch it for the first time. We're gonna rate it and talk about it. That's fine. All right. <laughs> Those are my favorite. I'm always down to. I mean, it's a movie I know that I should have watched, but it's now. okay. Like, I'm, I'm not. You know me. I'm not one of these people. You know. You know people that I hate. People that are like, you've never seen that? You never, <laughs> oh my, what? you never seen that? You're right. Dude, that's, that oh my gosh. Good. No, no, sorry, there's usually one more. You've never seen that? Dude, that's so rude. Don't you be doing that to people out there. If you're yelling at people for not seeing stuff, guess what? You probably didn't even see it if you're asking someone that until a month ago. No one has seen it until they've seen it, and not everybody's seen everything, and there's a lot of stuff out here. It really is. So give us all a break. So we're going to be, that's why we'll be doing this forever. But Andy, you're an idiot for not seeing this thing. <laughs> I know I am. <laughs> I just do it to you. Uh, all right. It's coming up. Uh, once upon a time, Hollywood, you got our rating. Andy, your rating. I go 2.9. Wow. You do it was a good movie, but I just wasn't, I, I went under three because I'm not in a hurry to rewatch this. To see it again. Or maybe like in 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Like maybe we're like retiring and yeah. it's like, remember that movie? And then I'd check it out. I don't know. Uh, other than that, I'm not in a hurry to see this thing at all. Once upon a time in Hollywood, a couple two pointers over here, but uh, maybe you like it. Let us know what you think. Write us in at the website. Love to hear from you folks. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, this is mostly superheroes. We're going to talk about comic-con San Diego, 2021, the announcements that came out, the stuff we're that, that we're excited for. And we'll wrap this thing up with coming up. Stick around. We'll be right back. In 1961, the Fantastic Four returned from space and the world changed forever. Over the next year, the Earth experienced three alien attacks, the destruction of Lower Manhattan, and the reemergence of ancient gods. Super Serious 616 is the podcast that covers it all from the inside. What would it be like to live in that world? Join Ed and Mike as they ask questions no one else is asking. Is Iron Man a good use of shareholder capital? Subscribe at Super Serious 616 or wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs> The meat. Nope, this is the vegetable version. Oh my god! Yeah, well, sound there. Yeah, you're right. I had I used the meat after the break. So Sorry. welcome back from the break. And Ve vegetarian, I said vegetable. Man, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> you're the best part. I'm gonna tell them. Let's tell the listeners. We were before we started. I said, there's no meat in this episode. And Andy goes, like, what is this, a vegan episode? <laughs> and, like, you know, we weren't recording yet. And I go, uh, put that in your back pocket. <laughs> it's been <laughs> What'd waiting. What would you say? It's a vegetable? It's the vegetable version. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the vegetable portion of the episode. Uh, we have no meat for you today, sir. The market is closed. And we're talking about Comic-Con. Like, I don't want to, like, honestly, it's perfect because we're going to talk about a, we're going to talk about all the announcements, basically, all the big stuff. And we'll run down the list. But there's really not that much at, like, giant. There's no, like, giant thing. There's no, like, giant reveal other than a couple things that I just didn't know about that I'm now excited about. Okay. So, Andy, if it's cool with you, I just want to break down Comic-Con San Diego. Okay, man, this thing just took place July 23rd, 25th. We talked about it last week. Um, there was some Comic-Con at home dates also coming up uh, in November. So, November 26th, 28th. Mark your calendars now. You can get in on this Comic-Con at home. They're doing a whole special virtual thing um i've got to i did some, we did this a little bit for um what's the one for dc dc fandom oh yeah that's Remember what that? i was that's what i was thinking so i think it's similar to where you actually it's pretty cool they do like schedules for five days and there's stuff scheduled from eight to five every day 
and it'll be like, oh, uh, sit down with Grant Gustin for him to tell us all why the Flash is garbage now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Have you seen the gif going around of the CW's Flash and like they're showing the lightning battle? Listen, I'm gonna say spoiler alert because it's like a gif now. People, people are like, what's going on with the Flash? I tried watching it last week. I tried watching it two weeks ago, and it is it's 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 so bad. It's so so very bad. Have you watched it? I, I I stopped in the middle of the first episode of this last season, and that's when I gave up. Dude, this gif, they, but, are, they are lightning. What are they doing with their lightning? One of them's throwing like Chinese stars that's lightning. One of them throws like a boomerang that's lightning. I, I don't know. It looked like Iris had powers. It looked like, I don't even know what was happening. Was Maybe like, not. Maybe that's what was the wrong. other one that they were playing with, like lightning lightsabers? Lightning lightsabers. Literally just the Barry the Owl in the Flash holding a red lightning rod that's the size of, size of a sword fighting Godspeed. But the supposedly, supposedly, I was reading with the reverse in, flash in the comments that that is a actual like thing that happened in the comic comic book. I don't so. care if it was or not. But still, it that just doesn't make looks it that, so weird. It doesn't make it cool. There's a lot of bad stuff in comics. <laughs> comic true. readers will tell you that firsthand. There's a lot of characters you don't need to know about, That's and there's true. some that you didn't need to know about that are famous as all get out now. Talk about Ant Man, Guardians of the Galaxy. Look what they're doing with the Flash. Seeing those two things, I was like, I'm I'm done. Like I'm, I'm so done. It's so sad because, I mean, we've, we're going off on tangent right now, and I'm fine with it because there's only a few things for Comic-Con. Talking about The Flash, man, talk about a show that has really disappointed me. Like, really? This is like feeling like Game of Thrones. It's like it's like Game of Thrones all over again. A show that starts off hot. Like, this is The Flash. Like, oh, my God, they have got The Flash. I'm telling my friends, me and Will in high school, we all we wanted was DC movies to come to life and like be multiverse. We were like, oh, man, there's a rumor there's going to be a Flash movie. Never, you know, and now we're finally getting it. Here we are, I mean, twenty years later. Um, but man, the show is just a letdown. I'm just sad. I'm just sad. I'm just. I'm just. I'm venting. I wouldn't give. I wouldn't put Game of Thrones level because I think it's more like <laughs> gradually true. downhill since the start. <laughs> That's true. Um, you're right. You're right. Because it. You're right about season four. I think I'm just done with the, all the CW shows. I got like thirteen episodes through the Superman, and I, I'm. I turned on the other one the other day, and I was like, "There's two left. We can do it." And I'm like, "I don't even don't care. want to." It's, yeah, you're right. How it, is it there just... a Superman show that I've watched 10 episodes of that I don't want to turn back on? How is that possible? How do I not like a Superman TV show? I, I mean, I can tell you that it's just I don't like that villain. But Well, the villain is weak and also just like bizarre yeah. and like unbelievable for so many reasons. Like, especially when is that Superman taking place? Like they have teenage boys. So has it been like 10 years? Has, I'm sorry, 16 years since the events of Supergirl and Crisis on Infinite Earths? Like, is, like, uh, am I taking crazy pills here? The last time I saw Crisis on Infinite Earths and the last thing before the Superman show was that Superman and Lois had a little baby. Oh, yeah. And they were off on that what? that That's like the that last Krypton good thing planet. that, those sh- that the, they sh- the shows had, honestly. Oh, that, it's yeah, for real. Are you kidding me? Do you remember that? That was whenever the Christ, this spo- spoiler alert for Crisis on Infinite Earths. That's whenever the credits were... Like it's coming to an end, and they show it was uh, Earth Zero or Earth Prime. Yes, and they were like Earth uh, blah blah blah. Uh, you got a teaser for Star Girl. Then they were like Earth blah 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 Doom Patrol. I've talked about this a lot on the show, and I told you I said they're just gonna sweep this under the rug, and they're doing it. And I, I, unless and what else did we get? The Flash from the you know from the DC universe, the movie universe. I don't know if you call it the Snyderverse. I guess. Because it is technically Ezra Miller's Flash is the Snyderverse. Yeah, yeah. He was on the CW show, the the Crisis on Infinite Earths. Um. So anyway, really tangent city. CW man, we're just overall <laughs> disappointed. And that was a good wrap on what's happened in DC World. Let's talk about Comic Con now. Get back to what we're talking about. The vegetable of the today's episode. And first up, uh, first of all, I got to give props to the article I used for this. This uh, you know someone already did a lot of work and put this together. It's the folks over at Screen Rant, and the person that wrote it here is Matt Morrison. Just published three days ago every major movie and TV reel from San Diego Comic Con 2021. You can click this link; it's in today's episode description. Talking about Marvel, we got a movie coming out called Moon Knight. Oscar Isaac says at Comic Con this thing's going to be wild. Oscar Isaac made a surprise appearance from the set of Moon Knight on Legendary Comics. Head Wounds, Sparrow Comic-Con panel. So this guy actually said that it's going to be a wild, wild show. Man, a few words, but 
I like Oscar Isaac. I like everything he's done. I think he's also going to be in Dune. Isn't he in I Dune? I don't know. I don't know. Either way, do you know anything about Moon Knight? Have you come across him in the no, comics but, at all? No, but I'm going to read some of his comics because I've a lot. Of, whenever I see like in Reddit, I read like a lot of Reddit threads, like to get recommendations for like what series to read, things like that. And I see that's one of the most recommended ones for sure. Well, I'm gonna grab. Look what I'm grabbing here. You see it? Oh, we're gonna do this. We're going. We're going wild on today's show. We're pulling out the Marvel Encyclopedia. And this thing is in alphabetical order, if you don't know how encyclopedias work. <laughs> and we're going to look up and just look at the quick thing. Because do you Tell me what you know about Moon Knight. Um, he looks badass. So that's, you he don't know anything. a lot of white, but I couldn't tell you anything else. Have you used your encyclopedia much at your house? No. <laughs> haven't. You haven't pulled it out at all? Not really. I think it almost be fun. I think it'll almost be fun to read, like, just as a book. Just read one character at a time. Um, this Moon Knight looks nothing, nothing like the Moon Knight we're looking at right now. I'm going to pull it up. I'll have it on the, the video, but just for you, Andy, look at this white suit guy. You see it? Okay. Yeah. I have seen that in the comics but a little bit. But that's totally different than what we're looking out here on, uh, on, from Screen Rant. You yeah. know, this is like a hooded figure, big muscly guy, Oscar Isaac. That, that looks like that's for, that's a really early comic. Like, they look so different over time. That's my biggest you're observation. R- you're is right, how, because he still has the moon, like, symbol, the same one. It's literally, like, the comics in, like, the 60s to, like, 80s look like they were made with, like, crayon and markers. Well, I'll, like now. I'll say this. I'll say this. The only real difference is that he doesn't have a hood over him. It looks like they're wearing the same mask, same eye shape. Um, just quick from the encyclopedia here. We got the Marvel Encyclopedia. Moon Knight, a mercenary left for dead in the Egyptian desert. Mark Spector was found by followers of the Egyptian god Khonshu, who saved his life and gave him superhuman powers. Returning to the U.S., Mark became a crime fighter, calling himself the Moon Knight and assuming two more alter egos, millionaire Stephen Grant and taxi driver Jake Lockley. Mayor fought crime for many years, battling against werewolf, Midnight Man and Black Spectre, and alongside Spider-Man and the Punisher, eventually Mark retired his alter ego, but then felt compelled to travel to Egypt. There, the Moon Knight was his destiny, one he could not shirk. Wow. I'll give it up, man. Thanks for that <laughs> book. I Re- love it. I knew we would use it that way. Re- it was just a matter of time. Remember books, Andy? <laughs> Everyone forgot about books. Yeah. They're still pretty cool. And uh, actually, speaking of it, while we're talking about books, I did finally get the history of the Marvel Universe, which you read. You were just saying at the break. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. So I'm going to have a good time reading this. I I, I would suggest having both of those next to each other. Hand in hand? So when you get to something in there where you were like, this is interesting, I would want to maybe read about it. Maybe maybe not go straight in and like read it in there, but maybe throw like a post-it note in there as like a page that you want to go back to after to read more about certain things that's that's, a, that's really good because it covers a lot of things in such a short amount of time yes and it's galactus reliving the marvel universe to a young uh to reed richard's son a franklin few, rich Frank, Frank, yeah franklin and richard, it's written by mark wade javier rodriguez alvaro Lo, Al, alvaro lopez history of the marvel universe yeah andy has raved about this thing and i appreciate the pro tip I will absolutely do that. How fun. Take a little notes, stick them in here, and then go back. Because you're right. It's like a six-parter, and I, I can see it. It's, I mean, it's paper. It's super thin. Yeah, you, you could do it in a couple days. If you hear that, listener, it's like a TV guide. It's like it's a little... It's not, not, yours is different than mine. Is it? Is yours a lot thicker than this? Did I get the right one? Mine's like uh, like it taller is. and like a... Yeah, mine's just bigger. Okay. Well, uh, there we go. Got a couple good books helping us out here today. Um, getting back to Comic-Con... Jumping all around, we have this uh, article from Screen Rant helping us out. Andy, tell me what you think about this. This is really why I pulled this up. I want to get a feeling of what's happening out here in the world. So Warner Brothers makes an announcement. I mean, I don't, I didn't read the details on this. Like, I don't know if they announced it at Comic Con because this seems like, I guess it is related to content. But Andy, you can help me out, like why I'm talking through here. Warner Brothers will make at least ten movies exclusively for HBO Max, their streaming service, meaning. Non-theater release, not a dual release, not early, not late, only on HBO Max. Ten titles. This in, uh, I mean, I don't know if that says like, you know, oh, in 2022. Yeah, this is 2022, so not all time. As long as they don't do the Disney Plus 
extra money BS, then I, I love this. Well, I think that's the middle of the ground, right? The middle road that maybe has been inevitable, right? You got the premier access so that you don't have to go pay and see it at the movies. Well, now from their mind, they're thinking purely about the consumer right now. They're like, okay, it's not in theaters. Well, you got your maybe, and you give it to them. You're already paying for HBO Max. You shouldn't have to pay more. What is going to be interesting about this is movie theaters have already been so upset about these streaming services. And obviously, the pandemic has not helped them at all. And we've learned a lot of lessons. But I wanted to think about just you and me, our perspective, our actual perspective of this thing. Like, what does this mean for us? Like, one title they talk about that this could happen for in this article, again, screen rant helping us out, uh, is a Batgirl movie. Or about maybe it's Batwoman actually even. No, Batgirl is what it says. On Does it say the there? Bottom line there. And and honestly, you could do this with anything, especially with a slate of movies coming up. Let's just like imagine, for example, um, you know, there's the Flash movie, and it was only on HBO Max. It's not in theaters. How do how how do you feel when I tell you that? My like selfishly, I'm excited because I don't have to pay for it, but I would still actually probably go to. Th- prefer to see it in theater so i guess that's a, mo- that's a moot point but no that's I, the point I mean, yeah, that's the I question is like would you rather go see it in a movie theater knowing that like you're like i don't have the option you're getting a little upset aren't you yeah yeah because right. especially for us I miss mean, mostly superheroes big superhero movies are events and we got a big one coming up tomorrow that i can't wait I'm to talk about so coming jealous. up i'm so jealous of I, have, I think a lot of people are jealous I'm gonna it get, really came together i'm gonna get tickets for, i keep forgetting uh for next thursday yeah i'm gonna, I'm gonna oh Next Thursday? Oh yeah, obviously. because it, the actual out. date for the public. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, we'll talk because about it. I realize it's a teaser. That's it, a teaser. It won't be out till Friday uh, on HBO Max. So, and it will though. That's what. Yeah, right, it's, so we'll just tell you real, we're talking about the Suicide Squad. I mean, you can't you can't avoid it. And we're talking about Comic Con. Of course, there was a tr- <laughs> there was a, uh, uh, an exclusive clip from the Suicide Squad. James Gunn at Comic Con. I didn't watch it because I don't want to see that yet. I want to. Did you watch it? Do you know what it was, though? No. I already read it. I won't even say it then. They showed it. It was like a two-minute clip. Had to do with King Shark. I'll just say that. Oh, uh, okay. Um, so, yeah. I So, I'm going to see it tomorrow. Got uh, early access screening. I entered this thing. James Gunn put on his Instagram and got two tickets. It was that easy. But you're saying that next week when this comes out in theaters, on Friday, it'll be available on HBO Max. So, that's cool. But, like, what will we do? We'll, I mean, we're going to go see it. I already yeah. am. You are. I'm going to, too, now. Well, this is, I'm, but this is superhero movies. But have you seen the reviews for this so far? Yeah. 100%. 100% on Rotten Tomato out the gate. Yeah, I'll give it up. For a movie we haven't seen, granted. It's pretty dope. I can't believe, I mean, people are going crazy about it. I've just seen a lot of good stuff. It's usually either good or bad, I will say that. So I'm hoping that fact that it's good. But here's the thing. I go in here with in check expectations, and you should too. Everyone should. Very true. And if... If you go in there hyping it up, you're going to hate it. If James Gunn kills this, I bet they throw a lot of money at him to do more movies. To do more. And yeah. maybe him and Zach just get in a room. Jesus. That might be kind That'd of cool. That'd be weird, yeah. I think it'd work. Yeah. I think you take Zach's love of the dark comic, and then James Gunn, who knows how to put people together. I mean, you get Kevin Feige in the room, it all come together but that's you know we're, oh, we're, yeah, building, yeah. we're just building the dream team now you get i mean you get uh <laughs> oh that's john the, favreau in there the crossover you get ryan that... coogler in there like you'd have like a movie you're talking about a movie right now right. well you know we're talking about avengers 5 <laughs> well let's send this episode to uh marvel and dc heads and see if this can get the the, oh. the big crossover started oh guys you've been looking for all the deep secrets to your formula or they're happening right now <laughs> most of superheroes um this is interesting man um i think it depends on the movie i think it very much because you can already tell what we just said about superhero movies but if this was like you know, it, yeah. If it was yeah. like I don't know, I'm trying to think of a movie that would like like it was oh Godzilla vs Kong. They did this, and I was like, this is cool. This is a Friday night movie. I was never gonna see this in theaters. That's why. Yeah, that's the thing. We see like it goes both ways. There's movies that you'll see be- that you wouldn't you'll see on HBO Max because you would not pay to see them in theaters. Well, I don't like this then. So you know why? Because it seems like the the overall concept is we're gonna reduce the event style. Movie watching for the fans that want that most. Long term, I agree. It's just not good for theaters. Well, sucks. not good for theaters. I'm just saying, like overall, it's like a down. It's it's a 
it's a negative impact on the human spirit. Like you got d- superhero fans that wouldn't be able to go now see their movie in theaters because it's not available in theaters. You got to watch it at home, which is like easier, but it's lazier and it's sadder. Like you're just like, you haven't left your house today. Yeah. And like you could have gone to the movies, but now you're taking that away for who? The guy that like doesn't even care what he watches and is just going to hit play on Friday night. Like, is that who we're trying to please now? Yeah. Is it that easy? Come on. Also, the way I look at it too is that, I mean, for example, like Loki was six episodes that were like 40 minutes. Like it's just a really just a long movie. So what's the difference of them calling that a show versus like Batgirl being a two hour movie on HBO Max? Yeah, I mean, you're it's, right. It's it's still... just, we've said that before, right? It's just a matter of like how you cut it up and then where you put it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Warner Brothers, we'll see what you do with this. We'll see how it works. Listener, if you have an opinion on this, we'd love to hear your thoughts. This is a big trend streaming and movie watching it's all changing everything's coming down to on demand pay monthly and now movies could be like going away this is a threat to the movie this is this isn't you know this isn't the uh indie like a small indie film group this is hbo this is warner brothers this is gonna have a major impact on the industry of movie watching so let us know what you're thinking about it we'll keep you apprised something that we're definitely keeping a pulse on here at mostly superheroes uh moving down the line let's move into dc world Talking about, again, Comic-Con 2021, San Diego. Some announcements over the weekend. This one is from, or is on, rather, Michael B. Jordan developing an HBO Max series for Black Superman. Val Zod. Superman Val Zod. You know how that is from your Superman experience? All right, listen. It, since I have none? I I don't. I know Zod. Like You know, Z- you know yeah, Zod, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that Val business, though? No clue. Are you about to do this again? So I'm in the DC (laughs) encyclopedia. This is wild, dude. Superman Valzad. Who is this guy? Here, I'm going to read this article first. Here, I'm going to give this to you, and I'll read this article while you're looking up. I guess look up Superman Valzad, and if you don't find that under Superman, just look under uh, like Val, maybe? See if that's something. And then for you folks, article from Screen Rant. Again, really appreciate the help. When it was announced that Warner Brothers was considering producing a Superman movie Centered around a black Superman. We talked about this news on the show. It was like six months ago, I remember. Michael B. Jordan was a popular casting suggestion, of course. This guy's awesome. I'd love to see it myself. It has now been confirmed that Jordan's production company, Outlier Society, is developing a new Superman project for HBO Max based around Balzad, an alternate version of Superman from the par- a parallel world of Earth 2. Created by Tom Taylor, Nicholas Scott, and Robson Racha. What a name. For their Earth 2 comic book series, Valzad offered a new take on this classic Superman story. Being a devout pacifist who had to overcome a fear of open space, open spaces, after discovering his status as a Kryptonian figure on Earth. It is unknown at this time if Jordan will play Valzad or only produce the series. So he's making this thing. This is Michael B. Jordan pulling his company out and saying, we're going to produce this. So this has nothing to do with the movie we talked about. I don't know if this is a replacement for that movie or if we're going to get like a Black Superman movie and then also this Black Superman show. Are you kidding me? Please be true. That would be awesome. Uh, Andy, have you found anything around Val or Zod? We found a lot out from the article so I feel like, you know, if you don't have anything over there, don't worry yeah, about I it. I love watching you frantically. So pages. this is what's weird. I'm looking at like, there's like an index at the end where you can just put it, look at someone's name and it tells you every page that they're referenced, which is pretty awesome as well. Mm-hmm. But this is the uh, DC encyclopedia, DC universe encyclopedia. Valzad 163 is, is page 163, but uh-huh. he doesn't have his own section and it's like, he's just must be mentioned somewhere in here oh, where I'm man. not seeing it. So. An index. That's right. The index of the encyclopedia just tells you the page, the word per page. Man, I'm having flashbacks to, to high school and college. <laughs> um, no worries, Andy. We got this from the article. So it looks like Balzad is an op, is a alternate version of Superman on Earth 2. And he yeah, has like this totally different thing. background, life, and uh, it's, a, it's a black Superman. We don't know if it's Michael B. Jordan playing this guy. Or if it'll be Michael B. Jordan just producing it and finding another actor for it. What do you think about this? Obviously something we'd love to see, right? Um, well, I was reading all through that stuff, so I wasn't paying attention to a word that you said. So, Oh, no worries. <laughs> um, you, you missed everything. Um, the I'm take, just kidding. The takeaway is 
would you want to watch an HBO Max series about a black Superman? I'll give it a shot. If I gave the yeah. CW crap a shot, then I'm going to do this just yes. to, to and give it's, its justice, and I think it'll, I think it'll be fine. Did you watch Watchmen? Yeah, I like that show. And now we got Doom Patrol. We got Titans. Titans is very close. August 13th? Yeah. I think, if I remember from our episode. Right on there. Let me, uh, yeah, it's yeah. coming. And uh, it, might be tw- it might be the 12th. It's one of those days. I thought it was the eighth. But. These are going to be the reason I bring them up is that these are going to be the re- these are going to be kind of the testing of what's happening, and I just don't understand. I guess like how would this be on HBO Max? I guess he's striking a deal with them because the other part of what I read was this is his company, Outlier Society. He's going to produce this thing, so he'll yeah. be the listed producing company, but it's going to be distributed by HBO Max. It's very interesting because we know how HBO Max operates. I mean, hey man, we saw. Wonder Woman, and it was garbage. It's just not a great movie. And the new one, say that. Yeah, oh yes, clarify. 1984. 1984. I'm sorry, gotta yeah. be specific. Oh, you're good. Well, the first one's maybe the best DC movie, uh, other than the Snyder it. Cut. Now I liked it. Do you think Snyder Cut's the best DC movie out there right now? I would say so. I think it's got to be right. Yeah, yeah. That's a big. That's a big statement. But we're not talking about MCU stuff. Correct. We're talking about DC. Just DC, DC not superhero. DC. Oh, yes. yes, for sure. Um, okay, we'll keep posted. Michael B. Jordan. Man, let's hear more about it. I hope we get some more news. And I'm also curious to see if there's still going to be a black Superman movie or if this is like, I don't want to assume it's being replaced because it's about a, another black guy, but I'd lo- I would watch both. I would love that. That'd be awesome. Oh, yeah. Titans, August 12th. FYI. Oh, good job. Titans. So that's a DC. We'll get a feel for what they're doing over there. All right. Uh, next up. Some news on the movie, or not movie, TV show we just talked about last week, season one of Invincible on Amazon Prime. This is something totally different, but same character. There's a live action movie coming out about this. I love to hear that. Did you even know this? No, (laughs) not really. I'll just read from the article. Invincible uh, creator Robert Kirkman confirmed that massive efforts were being undertaken to make the upcoming live action Invincible movie into something that was true to the comics, yet distinct from the Amazon Prime animated series. So this, they want to make it better than the book that Scott's read and better and different than the TV show. I mean, they're going for the... That's tough. They're reaching for the stars here. Kirkman was understandably silent as to just what changes, of course, if any, were being made for the movie. And there's no word yet on just when the film will be released or who has been cast in it. What is known is that the film is also being overseen by series producer... <laughs> Seth Rogen and That's Evan awesome. Goldberg. Wow. Okay. I guess I'm trying to think about Seth Rogen. What's he making? What's he make out there? And uh, Pineapple I mean, yeah, Express. Pineapple Express. Maybe knocked um, up all those. Knocked I mean, those up. Are... There was that stupid pickled movie he That's, did. See, yeah. I mean, it's a, that's he's been he's been pretty hit or miss <laughs> lately for a while now. But I think our buddy Adam on the Bachelor Party said Seth Rogen has peaked and failed. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I said, damn, No, dude. he's not. He's, That's what I he's said. He's doing fine. He has his own weed company. He has his he... own weed company. He makes his own movies, his own like stuff on the side. I go, but he said as a comedy actor, he hasn't done it. I said, That's not fair. Yeah. I think Seth Rogen's doing just fine. But is he gonna be making this invincible live action movie into something that we want to see? You know who we gotta find out, Scott, if you're listening right now, which you better be, like I told you, every week. <laughs> Don't miss it. Don't miss mostly superheroes. Yeah, we can't. We gotta sh- give him a shout out every week. He he deserves it. Well, I want to know what he thinks about this. Yeah, that, that's agree. the guy that has to tell us what is going. Like, is this something? Because he just wrote us that great review about the series. I mean, I already know the answer. If it were me, you get excited about this, for sure. But they better Ooh. do it right. I mean, even if they don't, like, is it gonna hurt the reputation of the show? No. So, it would only make uh, it better, yeah, actually. Think, yeah, honestly, yeah. it'd probably ramp it up. People would be like, "Well, you got to see the show." <laughs> All right, so let us uh, know if what you're thinking, Scott, and anyone else out there that's watching Invincible. Might be getting a live-action movie before you know it. We'll keep you posted. And then just one more piece, Andy, before we move on to what's coming up in the show. This was literally just some fan art that got shared, but uh, it was at the Mandalorian uh, table, I believe. So somewhere in the Star Wars stuff, they, you know, they were allowed to show this amazing fan art of this is a big spoiler alert for The Mandalorian Season 2. I'll just say that. Huge spoiler. I said it. <laughs> Luke Skywalker. Remember how much we didn't want to say it when we first recorded the Mandalorian episode? Like oh, We were yeah. like, we just couldn't even like say it because we didn't want to ruin it for people. Luke Skywalker takes Baby Yoda 
oh man, I'm getting all excited about this show right now, talking about it. And in this fan art, you got a baby Yoda, get ready to geek out here, making a lightsaber with the force. They got the crystals. We already know I from an article. I know, me too. And we know from the article that we just read in last week's episode, we're getting younger Luke and Leia's in this Obi-Wan show, and like, and then very likely to get the CGI'd younger uh, Luke Skywalker in the Mandalorian series again, and, and hopefully season three, or at least that's a big, we don't know what's going to happen. It's called the Mandalorian. It's not called Grogu. Right. But I anyway, I, I, I got I had to throw it out. This is uh try to give some props here to the artist. I don't know if they even I don't think they even mentioned it here. An officially licensed poster from the Mandalorian was previewed, which depicted Grogu, aka Baby Yoda, assembling a lightsaber under Luke Skywalker's direction. It's unknown if this is a tease that the Jedi apprentice will be returning for season three of the hit series, or if fans can expect to see more of a young Luke Skywalker Walker during the time when he was rebuilding the Jedi Order. In either case, it is heartening to see the beloved character doing well in his studies. That is so true. Good job, that. buddy. Just, I had to, I mean, pretty cool, huh? I'm, I feel like these shows, like The Mandalorian, just kind of gets lost in the shuffle because we're not, we're just not gigantic Star Wars fans and there's so much other content. But like when it's on, it kills. Like when I'm it's kind on? of excited because I'm, I'm pretty sure, maybe I'm wrong. I thought that. Are these gonna come out on Friday, or or, or was it only? I, I don't remember. You remember? I think I, I think it was Friday. It was Friday. It used to be Fridays, but listen, here's I was the, wondering if if it would be Marvel shows because there's gonna be a time when both are probably coming out at the oh, same man. time. Can't wait for those weeks. So, yeah, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so like, I don't know if one's Wednesday and one's Friday, or if it's gonna be like Wednesdays. You have like get to watch Hawkeye and Mandalorian two or something like that. All right, listen, I'm asking you a tough question. Because I'm thinking, I've already, it's already hit me. All right. Have you seen anything in the past year, TV show wise, better than The Mandalorian? And I want to directly ask you do you think that any of the MCU shows we've seen this year are were, better, than, were better wow. than The Mandalorian? Wow. Because I can tell you, for me right now, the way I'm like really sitting here, I'm, I don't think I can say that any of these MCU shows were better than The Mandalorian. And Loki was awesome. We just reviewed it. We talked about it, broke it open. We got excited. I loved it. It was fun. Did I feel like I felt watching any of The Mandalorian? I just don't think so. I think The Mandalorian might be the best thing we saw Damn, in, the last, right. in the last year. Last I'm, try, year I'm, I'm juggling between that and Loki, and I don't. I'm trying to give you a minute. I, I see your face. You're, you're distress. Well, I, I don't want like the finale and like, the hype of that yes. last, of the last season. How, are we on the... How many seasons of Mandalorian have there been? There have been even... two. Okay, thank you. And, well, I misspoke earlier, and, and so the upcoming is the third season. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Whew. Wow. But the I'm, end. Time flies. But the end of it, I'm like where you're going with this because this is something I never really said. I've thought about it more though. It was amazing, and I was like, "Holy shit!" That's definitely we've already. I mean, spoiler alert for season two. Gave it. It's Luke Skywalker, man. I mean, he comes in, he does his thing, but like when he was on screen, it felt a little weird. It you know. I know it would be weird for them to do more, th- more like de aging like that. Yeah, like is he gonna come back term, and like, like be in the show? Little spots here and there is good, but because he almost felt like one of those like guys at Chuck E. Cheese a little bit, like a little like a <laughs> like he's like hello Mandalorian. If yeah, I like, guess... he looked good. It looked amazing, but I it just felt you, a little strange. If you told someone who doesn't know who Mark Hamill is or Luke Skywalker yes. and had them watch, would they believe it was a real person or? CGI. That's a real. That's the best thing you ever. One of the best things you ever said. That's a great point. <laughs> you got to talk to somebody that watched this, that didn't really even know who like Luke Skywalker was, and like see like what they thought. But like I don't know. It's not a lot of people on Earth though. <laughs> it's not, and also it. The whole scene is about it being Luke Skywalker. Like man, the glove, the Force. Yeah. Talk about the coolest light. I mean, I just watch that scene sometimes of him breaking down the going in there and taking Baby Yoda. What a show, man! Holy shit! But do you think? Do you I th- think you're right. Actually. Do you think Loki? I think, think Loki's better. I think I, I think I put Mandalorian above above Loki, which, which is saying a lot because, like I said, we're not like giant. We're Star starting Wars, to whisper. Star Wars like, guys. I'm like, <laughs> we don't want to say t- it. It's it's hard. It's a hard call. But I, I mean, like I said, the the finale of of Mandalorian with with that reveal. I don't I don't know if that's like clouding like how I'm thinking about the show being better than it than it really is. But right now exactly. that I'm thinking back on like. 
oh yeah this happened and that happened like the like emotions that certain like like episode one in the fight against the dragon the dragon monster that you literally see the carcass of in the old movies like on the side of the desert yeah all right then you also get the jedi remember the jedi episode Mm -hmm. and the spear okay i think you're right yeah I can just see the show, and I'm like, that's remember Bill Burr? Remember breaking into that thing? Remember him taking off his helmet? This all really leads to like the question that you asked Phase Zero today, and which makes makes me really think that I hope hope they take it. Are they underachieving on uh, the Marvel? That is like on their shows. I'm hey, I said it to Phase Zero. I hope you guys took my question. I hope we can talk about it on our show. I yeah, I said, is the quantity is the quantity going up and the quality is going down? It's hard to tell. Can't, it's it's almost uh, not as hard to tell the more I think about it. <laughs> I want I don't want to be a downer. I don't want to be a guy that's like sad about. But we I think we want to be honest. Need to temper our expectation. I've enjoyed the yes. shows more than I've tempered my expectations. Right, I will say that. Yes, and actually now that we watch Black Widow and like it was just it was fine. You know, you go in and you watch like Shang Chi, something brand new, and then like man, can you? This is you said it. You said Shang Chi. Thank you. <laughs> hey, keep me keep me straight here. I will. But hey, man, think about this though: Spider Man No Way Home. You know it's gonna bang. Yeah, where's that damn trailer? Where's that damn trailer? And will they do one? Will they not? Maybe they won't. The more it gets closer to it, I'm like, why? Why even release one at this point? Do they need it? Mike said no. PC Mike said they do not need it. When we talked about it last time. All right, we'll see. Um, all right, man. I know we went Tangent City there, but this is stuff we got to talk about. I know it's like hard, and sometimes like you don't want to say one of your favorite things is like not the greatest. Like, no one was more heartbroken whenever Batman vs. Superman was just kind of dumb. Like, trust me, man. I had to defend it to my friends. I had to tell people that movie was good. And, like, I go back, and it's fine. It's like, if you don't take it as seriously, you do okay. But I want us to be realistic about what's good out here, what's not. And uh, if these major companies, you got Disney and Warner Brothers, like, hey, you're going to make this stuff? First of all, it's exploded. Everybody, I mean, superhero stuff, fantasy like all this stuff has like become like it is everywhere, Andy. I love it. It's every week. There's some kind of crazy new thing getting announced and made. I saw today like seven more Marvel shows that you haven't heard of. What? When? Who? What? Yes. They actually named them? No, not okay. yet. It was like I they're, they're, they're going to be announced, you know, at some point. Like stuff they can't announce until stuff comes out. I'm excited, but I also want to be realistic and we'll always be honest with you if we like stuff or not. Promise me, Andy. Deal. Deal. PC Mike always has. He always will. He's the most honest. And kind. He is. Um, All right, that was a nice little review of Comic-Con San Diego 2021. Big thanks to Screen Rant for that article. You can find that in today's description. Go click it. Go read it for yourself. Uh, Like I said, some big stuff. Kind of lukewarm, not too bad. We'll keep you posted on all the major announcements that we hear of that we want to talk about. All right, let's talk about what's coming up. a different kind of episode today huh andy it was way different but i loved it like just let's get more questions from the listeners please yeah you said that in the break i don't care how you get them to us you like that and pc mike has said that before too he said he likes pulling in the other thoughts keeping our thoughts kind of from getting too circular send them email snail mail carrier pigeon yeah we're gonna get a p.o box here i've decided okay and we'll have one it'll be at the local post office oh and not just, uh, I live nowhere near her if you're a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll be a P.O. box, but we'll do something like that. Yeah, we want any kind of question you got, a topic, anything that bends the mind. I think that's what we liked about that question. It makes cool. us dig deep into what we love and talk about it. I'm with you. Facebook group, write us in at mostsuperheroes.com. And then, uh, yeah, we got phase four coming up, Shang-Chi, September 3rd. And we're still waiting on What If, which is right around the corner, August 11th. And, oh, man, cannot wait. We're, uh, I mean, two weeks for us right now. Yes. Uh, always going to be talking to MCU. We'll keep posted on that. We are going to be doing Superman, too. I know we keep talking about it. Me and Andy had a bachelor party. We'll we just get there. We just didn't have time. And then, I honestly, I decided this week, I was like, let's watch this one with PC Mike. PC Mike is also DC Mike, so I like to get the I DC like stuff for him. Uh, Superman 2 is going to be coming up. If you've already watched it and you're waiting on us, I'm sorry. <laughs> Someone's just like, another week. Yeah. It's been two weeks. I forgot what I happened. Mean, just watch it again. Watch it again. Like you'll understand it better. Uh, maybe we'll let you know. I used to do this thing where I'd tell you when I'm watching it, so that we could all like kind of like be in the Facebook group, like watching it at the same time. Maybe I'll do that again. We'll let you know. You have to get in the most of Superhero Squad for that. Speaking of Squad, 
This is from James Gunn Instagram. They did a promotion just yesterday. This was awesome. You can follow James Gunn on Instagram. He's one of the biggest fans of the show. We know this. Yes. He, yes. Likes, he liked to comment on Instagram th- this week, Andy, and a tweet. Two things, one day, just saying. This guy knows us. And what he liked was me telling him, I went for this. The promo is, you don't know squad. This was a promo that he did, I guess, just with the producers of the show. An exclusive advanced screening of The Suicide Squad, James Gunn's movie. One week early. I'm seeing it tomorrow. Andy's face. He looks so jealous. I love it. This is awesome. I did this for Batman vs. Superman, and you get to do it for Suicide Squad, which has 100 Rotten Tomatoes. Like, what's Batman vs. Superman's Rotten Tomatoes? Go ahead, pull it up. Guess right now. I'll I'll guess it's a 22. You think, like... Audience score or critic score? Mm, if it's a Rotten Tomatoes audience score, I'll say it's a 31. I'm going to give it a 45. You'll find it. And then while you're doing that, Suicide Squad, this is tomorrow, man. I know you're jealous. That's why you're doing this. You're derailing my comp. You're, just, you're trying to deal, derail my joy is what you're trying to do. It's not going to work. I can't wait. Carrie and I are going. And it's guess what it includes? All right, go ahead. Did you find it? I yeah. see your face. Go ahead. All right. What bad man for Superman have? Audience sixty three. Oh, that's that's not that's that's way better than I thought it was. And I think that's probably critics better. was twenty eight. So yeah, critics they always hate it. It's a fun game. We need to do that more often. We we will. Well, this one's at hundred right now, <laughs> and people are going bananas for it online. Chris uh, Killian, I think maybe he had seen it. Brandon definitely had. Brandon Davis over at comic book. Um, the reviews coming out of these folks are just I have hot. not not seen a single bad one, and like the good ones, they are like glowing reviews yeah I'm like who's paying these people to say this margo a- robbie obviously pretty bias you know but she said it was the best dc movie yet like uh, you know it's the one that we finally deserved basically uh, this is the kind of stuff you want to hear i take all this with a huge grain of salt maybe a small one it's a small grain of salt i don't know what the difference i don't even know what that phrase really means you take it with a grain of salt it's like because good. it gives you a little taste i don't know i don't know either we gotta look that up things you don't right know thing, you're finding out things logan and andy but- don't know what were you gonna say? They are uh, so they're doing a not safe for work. They're not doing a not safe for work NSFW. You know that's stupid an acronym people use, but they're doing this thing with James Gunn in the cast. So there's like this little Q and A portion that'll play like right before this special screening. Seeing it tomorrow, uh, Thursday, July 29th. So one week early, and then you'll see it next week, Andy. And then we'll wait for after your review. I'll do an instant uh, reaction. That'll be like some yeah, bonus content we'll works. put out here for the Patreon folks and for uh. Maybe for the squad, might give you guys get, get you guys in on that. We'll do an instant reaction to this, and then Andy, I'm sure Mike will go see this, and we'll uh, do a full review. It'll definitely be the meat. We've been waiting on this thing for so long. Peacemaker, uh, Pete Davidson's in this movie. Harley Quinn, she's coming back. Um, you got the same actress playing I'm Amanda Waller, and uh, I can't wait to see what they do with this thing. We just we're hearing good stuff, and yeah, we're gonna go see it in movies. I can't wait. I cannot wait to see this. I'm- I'm pumped. It happened so out of nowhere. You know, two days before I see this on Instagram, I go, I'll just go to this website and try. And it was super easy. I'm going to go to Three Kings again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got to shout out the theater. That's where we're going. We're going to uh, Ronnie's. It's an IMAX. I saw that. I'm so jealous. It's IMAX, too, dude. Is it sold out? Can I? You should try. You should just try to show up and then, like, I don't know, maybe because yeah. like, there's going to be a it... shortage of tickets. You just got to go in there and peek and then, like, if look for an open seat. But you don't want to take someone's seat. You got to wait till after no. it starts. I can't do that to my wife. Well, you take the money and you Steph I mean, you could leave the money at the theater too. So like, I don't know. There's a right way to do it, but don't lie to your wife. Yeah, don't yeah, do that. Yeah. yeah. Cuz she I wants to see it. <laughs> I can wait. It's okay. Hey, you wait and then uh fans, you're just going to know that we're seeing it a little early and you'll get an instant reaction right here on most of superheroes. We'll help you out. I'll keep it spoiler free. It'll be a pure pure reaction take on that, so don't have to worry about that. And uh well, we might do spoilers. If I do, I'll give you a spoiler. I love alert. it. Maybe yeah, I'll do like yeah. half and half, you yeah. know. I can't believe that's coming together. And uh, yeah, watch for that review. And then the schedule online, you guys will notice, you know, the schedule, the main thing you need to know about is new episodes on Monday, Sunday on Patreon. Yes, we do go live on Instagram and Twitch sometimes, but if you're there every time at noon waiting, I can't promise you it's always happening right at noon. Just keep (laughs) your eyes peeled. You know, turn on those notifications if you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you can hit that little bell icon no matter where you watch or listen to us, whether it's in your podcast app, your social media app, or in Patreon even. You can turn on alerts so you can know whenever new stuff's coming out. And it's not just these episodes. You know, me and Andy and, and Mike, we get in here. We have some guests on. We do the fun stuff. But, you know, I'm also doing instant reactions, some bonus content here and there. 
Um, the music show still comes out, and just not as often, not quite every Tuesday, but we're going to start bringing that back into the mix. And uh, keep an eye on that social media because we're super active in the Facebook group. We love it. Andy, this was a fun time today, man. I agree. I really had a good time. We should do you. this every week. I think we might maybe mix it in a mix of kind of how we do the show. We're going to have a little bit more of the uh, talking about stuff, but the meat is returning. Don't worry. The meat is part of the show. Yeah, I can't be a vegetarian or vegan or. No, you need to mix. You have, a, you have to have a balanced diet. Yeah, meat's my favorite. It's what you want. It's that sizzle. All right, Andy, well, we'll see you next week again. Folks, go check us out at mostlysuperheroes.com. Tell a friend. Thanks for being the best squad, the best fans. We appreciate you so supporting any independent podcast you're listening out to out there. Uh, and we'll see you next week on Mostly Superheroes. Come back and see us. Take it easy.